Welcome back to Ligari Products. We want to show you the easiest countertop kit to install on the market, hands down. These kits will save you thousands of dollars and look like real stone. This is a simple DIY remodel of your existing countertop that requires no artistic ability and can be completed over a weekend. And as always, like and subscribe. I'm Kyle, now let's see how it's done. All right guys, it's mixing time, but before we get this mixed up, we just wanna make sure that our countertop is completely prepped. Last thing you wanna have happen is to have to go back and, and complete a prep step and leave our mixed resin in the bucket. Now we're gonna get this epoxy mixed up. We're gonna be using white pigmented epoxy and our brown Ligari FX. First thing you wanna do is get your, both your part A's dumped out. And then we're gonna add our part B, do our 3P2 mixing process and get it over to Tyler so we can get it out on the countertop. All right guys, now that we got all our white epoxy mixed up, we're gonna get our six dirty pour batches ready. And again, we're just using our pigmented white and brown Ligari effects. So we're just gonna layer those in randomly. Like Kyle said, we want to make sure we get this resin out of these buckets as quick as you can. So again, make sure everything's ready, tape's ready to go, plastic's all down, right? Once you're done mixing, we can jump right on the, the counter and start pouring this stuff out. Um, there's a few ways you can pour it out. You can map out a design. You can use Sharpies over the primer. You can draw on it because it's going to cover it and then you just follow that design or you can just do it really random like we're going to. Now he used one and a half of our Ligari effects. You could start out with one, you could do half of one, and you can always add to it to make it a little darker, get more of that brown effects color in there, but you can't take it out. So just remember that if you, if you add all those, you can't really make the counter lighter, but we can always make it a little darker. So 
We started with one and a half. We're going to start dumping out. If we want to add more of that brown effects, we'll add it as we go. I'm going to pour with spaces in between. Once we start filling the counter up more and more, I want to make sure I'm pouring where all the gaps are of the primer. I don't want to just constantly pour right next to a bead, right? And then we'll have way too much resin on one part of the counter, not enough there. So I want to kind of jump around sporadically and then pour in the bigger gaps until there is, an, there is no more gaps. Okay guys, once your resin is all dumped out, you want to really make sure you don't have any opened up spots where you can see the primer, especially your back edges. We have a couple spots right here, right? There's no resin back on this edge and we simply just push the resin in there and then it will level itself out. And then make sure you're looking out throughout the counter as well. Because if it's, if it's a dry spot, the resin is not going to want to flow there easily. And so we want to slick it off so that resin can flow really easy. We got everything filled in. Again, guys, you wanna make sure you're like checking in your corners on your, all your tape edges. And the easiest spot to miss is your back uh, corners where like the tile, the backsplash is um, for filling in or having any missed spots. So just double check that. Once that's done, um, we can spray with isopropyl alcohol. That's gonna add a lot more cells or you can leave it like that. So I'm just curious what you guys would wanna see more of this veining pattern with the solid lines or what we're gonna do when we spray it with isopropyl, which one do you guys prefer? So if you guys want this exact look, don't spray the isopropyl alcohol, you'll just mist it with denatured alcohol. Misting with denatured alcohol is not gonna create that dispersing effect, just the isopropyl does. And so we're gonna start just doing small to medium drops um, and you'll see it a lot, it'll create a lot of dispersing effects in cells throughout where all, all of our Ligari effects are. So I'll spray half of this and then we can kind of look so you guys can decide, comment below which one you like better. So not sprayed, we have that tight veining pattern, right? And then over here where it's been sprayed, where that veining pattern was, it kind of dispersed those colors away. Creates a really cool natural look as well, um, but totally, two totally kind of different looks. Another option guys is you can spray random spots with just the isopropyl and leave some that aren't hit with isopropyl that can create a cool look as well by maybe just following one of these veins with the isopropyl and leaving the rest just a couple highlight veins but we're just going to hit this whole counter we'll let it evaporate for five minutes and then we'll mist it with denatured alcohol and obviously the more more effects colors you have in certain spots, the more cells you're gonna get in that area. All 
All right, last thing before pulling the tape is spraying with denatured alcohol. You, again, you want to let that isopropyl evaporate for about five minutes, and then we're just going to mist the whole surface. If you need to do it twice, let that evaporate again for about five minutes. We don't want to flood the countertop um, with these chemicals because what it can do is muddy out the colors in the veins and just kind of give it a muddy look. So again, we want to kind of let it evaporate before we just keep spraying it. So I'll go over when the right time to pull the tape. Obviously right now it's really fluid. It's just gonna drag all the design out the top. Um, the reason we do this process is, is to hold this design in place, let the resin set up, and then we pull the tape and it slowly drips down the edge and it doesn't affect the top um, design. So easiest way to do it is, so you fold this tape back and you'll see how fast it wants to flow down the tape right now. See how fast that design's moving down? So that means it's too early. If we pull this right now, it's going to probably drag from about here, about six, eight inches, and it's going to pull that design, and it's just going to make the counter look a lot different than it does now. So we wait until that resin sets up, and the easiest way to tell is when you fold this tape down, if it's just slowly moving down that tape, that's the perfect time to pull it, and it can take anywhere from 45 minutes up to two hours, depending on the temperature. Obviously, the colder it is, the longer it's going to sit there. The hotter, the warmer it is, the faster you're going to pull the tape. The second thing is, if you have thick edges like this, right, this is about, I don't know, two and a half, three inch thick edge, pretty thick edge. So we, we would want to pull that tape a little sooner than later. If you have really thin edges, you'd want to pull it later because you don't have as much um, face to cover. This is a lot of face to cover. So we want to make sure that resin is going to flow down and cover that whole face. So when we're ready to pull this, we'll go over that next. All right, guys, pulling tape. It's been about an hour. Um, so when we pull this tape back, you can see the resin is just moving down the tape very, very slowly. That's how you know it's ready to pull. We're just going to start at one point, pull it all the way around the countertop, and let, let the resin start dripping down the edges. All right, guys, and the last thing you want to do is you want to rub in all these drips, break up that surface tension so that the resin can just flow over nice, nice and easy. All right, guys, and the last thing, after your edges are all coated and everything, you're going to want to either take a paint stick or like a putty knife like this, and you're just going to want to scrape your edges. You probably want to stick around for a good two, three hours after the job's completed, just making sure that you're scraping your edges periodically so you don't have to come back the next day and sand those drips flat.